The Sealed Book. Once again, the keeper of the book has opened the ponderous door to the secret vault, wherein is kept the great sealed book, in which is recorded all the secrets and mysteries of mankind through the ages. Here are tales of every kind, tales of murder, of madness, of dark deeds, strange and terrible beyond all belief. Keeper of the book, I would know what tale we tell this time. Open the great book and let us read. Slowly, the great book opens. One by one, the keeper of the book turns the pages and stops. Ah, the strange story of a murderer who found that justice has an uncanny way of working itself out, as in the tale titled, Murder Must Be Paid For. as it is written in the pages of the sealed book. Our story begins in the office of Judge Wallace, Lucy Holden's legal advisor. Judge Wallace, an anxious expression on his face, is pleading with the beautiful young woman. Lucy, listen to me. You mustn't do this. Believe me, you're making a terrible mistake. I don't think so, Judge Wallace. I love Tom and I'm going to marry him. Lucy... Tom Barrow murdered your father. I know a lot of people think he murdered Dad, but I don't believe it. I wish I didn't. Listen, Lucy, Tom and your father were on a hunting trip. Your father died with a rifle bullet through his heart from his own rifle. Tom said your father dropped the gun accidentally and it went off. Yes, I know all that. Do you know that Tom robbed your own father on a business deal and would have gone to jail if your father had lived another week? I know people say so, but have you any proof? No, your father died. There's no case. Well, Judge, you've done your duty and warned me. So the responsibility is mine. All right, Lucy. You know, you've grown very pretty since you went away to school. Four years. I'm sorry we haven't seen anything of you in all that time. I'm sorry, too, but Dad wanted me to stay east. You know, Judge Wallace, I met my sister when I was in New York last winter. Your sister? Mm-hmm. What sister, Lucy? Doreen. Don't you know about her? Doreen? No. I never knew you had a sister. I didn't either until Dad wrote me and told me about it. But you knew Dad's first wife ran away with an actor a year after she and Dad were married. Yes, I knew that, but that's all. Well, Doreen was his first child. Her mother took her along when she ran away. I... I wondered if Dad had mentioned Doreen in his will. No, he didn't. Well, I'm going to send us the money anyway. Will that be all right? Oh, yes, of course. It's your money now. The whole million dollars. Thank you, Judge Wallace. Well, I have to go now. Tom's waiting for me. We're going to be married right away. And Lucy married Tom Barrow. Big and blonde and arrogantly self-assured. <laughs> Tongues wagged over the marriage, but ignoring the gossip, the happy couple settled down at Barrow House, on the edge of high cliffs, looking out over the Pacific. There, Lucy wrote many letters, especially to her half-sister, Doreen. 
dear Doreen. I hope that at last you're going to have a chance to visit Tom and me here at Barrow House. I know you'd like Tom, and he'd like you. Hello, but... darling. Oh. Well, more letters to Doreen? Oh, yes, Tom. I'm trying to persuade her to come visit us, and since her show's going to be in San Francisco all this week... Oh, good. If she's half as pretty as you are, I'll welcome her with open arms. Well, people in New York used to take us for twins, but she's really much more sophisticated than I am. She's an actress. Uh, sounds more and more interesting. <laughs> but how about coming for a speedboat ride, hon? Water's just right. Oh, I can't. This is the day I volunteered to help the sisters at the Mission Hospital. Oh, for Pete's sake. Uh, that's a 30-mile drive, 20 to town and 10 more beyond. You won't get back till after dark. I'm sorry, Tom, but I promise. <laughs> And so, a short time later, Lucy drove off to her volunteer nursing work. So she was not present to see the dusty taxi that drove up to the house several hours later, leaving a visitor. Hmm. I wonder if anyone's home. Ahoy, the house! Is anyone in? Nobody but me. Who are you? Oh, why, Lucy! (laughs) Wrong guess, mister. Try again. Holy smoke, I thought... No, your hair's done differently, and you're taller. Say, well, you can't be Doreen. Why not? Is there a law against it? A mystery sister here at last. And on the day, Lucy's away. You mean I've missed her? Oh, she'll be back tonight, and you're staying, aren't you? Mm-mm, can't. I have to get back to town to catch the 7 o'clock train for Frisco. No, that's too bad, but, well, there's... Uh... No reason you and I shouldn't get acquainted before then, is there? None I can think of offhand. Oh, then come on in. I'll show you around, and then I'll mix us a couple of drinks. Okay? Okay. Ah, that tastes good. <clears throat> Well, how do you like our little place, now that you've seen it? I go for it. Imagine sitting out here on the cliffs every evening and watching the sun set into the Pacific. Pay us a visit and you can do it. Maybe I will. How high are these cliffs anyway, Tom? Eighty feet, straight down to the Pacific. There's deep water at the foot of them. Oh, I'd hate to fall off. But as for the visit idea, on second thought, I don't think I will. Why not? We'd love to have you. I know I would. That's just the trouble. I might find myself poaching on little Lucy's territory. You uh, mean that? Mm -hmm, Yes. Now I can understand how little Lucy came to fall for the guy who killed her father. So you've heard that gossip, eh? Yes, but not from Lucy. You did kill him, didn't you? Of course not. It was an accident. A very regrettable accident. Oh, of course. Now, uh, how about driving me back to town? I'll just have time to catch my train. All right, but you're going to come again. I know it. Well, maybe. Well, you know, I think you and I could understand each other. It's too bad I didn't meet you first instead of Lucy. <laughs> That evening, when Lucy returned, she was upset to learn that she had missed Doreen. But Tom said that Doreen had promised to come again in a few weeks. And then, because Lucy was tired, they retired early. But during the night, Tom awoke to find Lucy shaking him. Tom! Tom! Huh? What's the matter? What is it? Tom, you were talking in your sleep. T- talking in my sleep? Yes. I thought you might be having a nightmare. No. No, I'm all right. Oh, I'm sorry, Tom, but when I heard you talking in your sleep, I thought Uh, I... Uh, uh, What was I saying? Nothing that I could understand. Why? Uh, No reason. Just curious, that's all. I've never talked in my sleep before that I know of. Oh, yes, you have, darling. Several times the last few weeks. Lucy, are you telling me the truth? Why, of course. Why should I lie about such a silly little thing? No. Of course you wouldn't, Lucy. Yes, Tom? Suppose I sleep in the corner room after this. 
In the corner room? Oh, Tom, you aren't serious. Oh, I'm perfectly serious. And the realization that I might be disturbing you would make me more and more nervous until I wouldn't be able to sleep at all. Well, if that's really the case. I... It is. And anyway, we'll try it for a while, shall we? <laughs> After Tom moved to the corner room, there was an atmosphere of strain between him and Lucy. Lucy, however, pretended not to notice it and went about as though everything was just as it had been. She wrote many long letters to her sister Doreen, but Tom noticed that whenever he came close to her, she covered the letters so that he could not see what she was writing. His suspicions aroused, he waited until she left one of them in the mailbox for the rural delivery carrier to pick up. As soon as she was out of sight, he swiftly ripped it open and read it. Uh, now, Lucy, we'll see what you're so carefully hiding from me. Dear Doreen, I have dreadful news for you. Now I know that Tom did kill my father. Night after night, I've been listening outside his door, becoming more and more certain. Last night, he cried out distinctly, I killed him, I killed him, but they'll never prove it, never. Doreen, what shall I do? If he killed father, he may kill me. I go in fear of my life. I've taken one of his hunting knives, and I carry it around with me to protect myself in case he attacks me. So that's how it is. That's what you've been up to, eh? Well, Lucy, I think that you and I must have a little talk. <laughs> But when Tom returned to the house, Lucy was not there. At last he located her, standing at her favorite spot on the cliffs near the house, a spot that overhung the sea which beat unceasingly against the rocks beneath. His footsteps muffled by the sound of the surf. Tom came quietly up behind her. Lucy! Oh, Tom, you frightened me. Lucy, I want to talk to you. Oh, what about... I just read the letter you wrote your sister. You... you opened it? Yes. You little fool. You know perfectly well such evidence means nothing in a court. Nothing. Oh. Now, why not be sensible? Come on, Lucy. Let's forget the whole thing. It's over and done with. No. No, stay away from me. Don't come near me. Lucy, put that knife down. No. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just trying to talk sense to you. No, don't come any closer. Lucy, be careful. You go over the cliff if you... Lucy, look out! <laughs> to continue the story as it is written in the sealed book. Tom Barrow, a look of horror on his face, stared over the edge of the cliff from which Lucy had fallen. Lucy was gone, swallowed up in the huge waves 80 feet below. Tom searched desperately for her until darkness fell and forced him to return to the house. He strove to calm his nerves and plan a course of action. Uh, 
that's better. Now maybe I can think. They'll say I murdered her, but they won't be able to prove it. No matter what they think, they'll be able to prove nothing. <laughs> then the joke will be on Lucy. I'll inherit the whole estate her father left her. And that is a laugh. <laughs> Hello? Hello, brother-in-law. Uh, Doreen, where are you? In town. Is Lucy there? I thought I'd come out and visit you two. Uh, no, uh, no, she's not here just now. Well, when will she be back? Or don't you want me to come see you? Yes, but... Doreen, listen. Yes? There's something I've got to talk to you about, privately. Where are you now? At the restaurant across from the railroad station. Stay there for half an hour. I'll meet you there. I have a proposition for you, and I think you're going to like it. So that's the whole story, Doreen. I just wanted to talk sense to her, and she backed away from me and fell over the cliff. So you killed her, did you, Tom? No, I tell you I didn't. It was an accident. All right, it was an accident. As a matter of fact, I'm inclined to believe you. Now, what did you want to talk to me about? Well, Doreen, it should have been you and me, not me and Lucy. You and I belong together. Mm, maybe. Go on, Tom. Now, here's my idea. You look like Lucy. Mm -hmm. I want you to take Lucy's place. Take Lucy's place? Yes. We'll be married secretly. You'll call yourself Lucy. No one will ever know the difference. And I'll give you half the estate that Lucy inherited from her father, because now that she's dead, I'll inherit it all from her father. Think, Doreen. A half a million dollars. So you want me to take Lucy's place, Tom? Clever. Yes, very clever. No public outcry, no investigation, no suspicion of you. No, Doreen, I'm crazy about you. And we'll get along swell together. We'll travel, have fun. You'll be rich. Yes, I'll be rich, Tom. Then you'll do it. No. What? I have a better scheme than that. What? What do you mean? If you're convicted of murdering Lucy, Tom, you can't inherit her estate. Then it'll come to me as her next of kin. That way I'll have it all. Doreen. So I'm not going to fall in with your plan. Instead, I'm going to work one of my own. I'm going to see you convicted of murdering Lucy. And so, despite Tom's frantic arguments, Doreen insisted that he go with her to Lucy's old friend, Judge Wallace. Judge Wallace called in the prosecuting attorney. And they heard Tom's story in silence. It won't wash, Barrow. First the father, then the daughter die in accidents. With you, the only witness. It's too much for anyone to believe. Judge Wallace, I have letters from Lucy proving that she'd heard him admit in his sleep that he killed her father and that she was afraid of him. How about it, Mr. Roden? Can we hold him for murder? I'm afraid not, Judge Wallace. The letters would help, but they're not enough legally to win a conviction. Unless Lucy's body can be found with some evidence of murder about it, the law can do nothing. Lucy's body will be found sooner or later. I'm going to offer a reward for it. And then we'll see whether you can be convicted or not. But a week went by, and a second week, and Lucy's body was not recovered from the restless waters of the Pacific. A third week... And Tom Barrow began to breathe easily again. Then one morning he received a call from the prosecuting attorney to view the body of a young woman that had been found on the beach by fishermen not far from Barrow House. Well, here I am. Where's the body? Is it Lucy, Mr. Roden? I prefer not to give an opinion until you've both seen her. Uh, attendant, open number 17, please. I lift the sheet so you can see the face. I'm afraid it's badly battered, probably by rocks. Oh! That's not Lucy. I'm positive of it. Well, Miss Holden, what do you say? Uh, I'm not sure. Now, I have everything that was on the body here in this envelope. Two rings and a silver pin. Here they are. Mr. Barrow, do you recognize them? No. No, I don't. I can't be sure about the rings, but that pin was Lucy's. I sent it to her for a wedding present. If you look on the back, you will see engraved to L from D with love. That would be to Lucy from Doreen, wouldn't it? It would. I think that settles the identification. But there's one more point. 
As you'll see when I turn back the sheet further. <gasps> a knife. A knife through her heart. No. It can't be. Your knife, Mr. Barrow, with your name stamped on it. Thomas Barrow, you're under arrest for murder. <laughs> Thomas Barrow, you have been found guilty of murder as charged. The sentence of this court, accordingly, is that at four o'clock in the afternoon on the day of June 3rd, you shall suffer death in the lethal chamber of the state penitentiary. And may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> to continue the story as it is written in the sealed book. Tom Barrow's lawyer appealed the death verdict, but his appeal was rejected. The evidence was far too overwhelming. Tom kept protesting, but of course no one believed him, except the visitor whom the guard brought to his death cell one afternoon. Here you are, Miss Doreen. Thank you, guard. You can talk to him for ten minutes, that's all. I'll stand back here where I can keep an eye on him, but I won't be listening. Hello, Tom. You devil. You did this. If it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't be here now. But you are here, where you belong. You ought to be amused at the way things turned out, Tom. If it hadn't been for you and those letters and that knife. You know how that knife came to be in Lucy's body. Yes, I do know. Lucy put it there. Lucy put it there? Yes, Tom. You killed Lucy's father, but the law couldn't touch you. So Lucy married you, just so she could see you punished. I don't believe you. You will. First, Lucy made you think that you talked in your sleep, that you'd admitted the truth that way. Made me think I'd talked in my sleep. Yes, because you didn't, ever. But when you got frightened and insisted on having a separate room, she knew definitely you were guilty. Then she carried out the plan she'd made long before. To see you punished. You're crazy. It was all an accident. She fell off the cliff. Yes, Tom, that's right. She fell off the cliff, but she's not dead. In college, Lucy was a swimming champion. She'd die from that cliff many times. When she fell, she simply swam underwater until she was out of sight behind some rocks. Then she swam ashore. (laughs) A few miles down the beach, she had a motorboat hidden in an old boathouse. She reached it, changed her clothes, and got to a fishing village down the coast in the boat. Then she simply took a bus to town. No one paid any attention to her. The body, her rings... That wasn't Lucy's body. It was the body of a girl who happened to resemble her in size and coloring. I knew it. That girl had been killed in an automobile accident. Lucy was able to secure her body, never mind how, and concealed it in the water in the boathouse only a day or two before she put her plan into operation. After she fell off the cliff, she put her rings and pin on the body and thrust the knife into the heart. And after three weeks in the water... Well, you understand. So that's it. Well, go on. What's the rest of it? When the time came, I saw to it that the body was taken from the boathouse and put on the beach where it could be found. 
And then I identified it. And here you are, Tom. You devils, both of you. But you won't get away with it. I'll get my lawyers to find Lucy I'm and... afraid that's impossible. No one can find Lucy. What do you mean, if she's alive? She's alive, but no one will find her, Tom. Because, Tom, I'm Lucy, too. I'm both Doreen and Lucy, you see. You... You can't be... Oh, but I am. Think, Tom. Did you ever see Doreen and Lucy together? Of course. That day you went to the mission... Yes. It was easy to stop in town, change my clothes, fix my hair differently... Put on lots of makeup and high heel shoes and come back as Doreen. The sister I'd been so carefully making you believe in all along. I should have guessed. I should have guessed. Well, I assured you no one else did. There was a real Doreen once who died as a baby. But that gave me the idea. And I made you think Doreen had her own selfish motive for seeing you convicted. So you wouldn't suspect we were both the same girl. You devil. Perhaps some people would say what I've done is wrong. But I don't think so. Because you killed my father. And murder must be paid for, Tom, as you're going to pay. Guard! Guard! What is it? What do you want? Call the warden. My wife isn't dead. This is her. Do you hear? It's all a trick. Oh, I'm afraid his mind is given away under the strain, guard. Yes, you'd better leave now, miss. We'll look after him. Yes, thank you. I'm afraid his mind is gone completely. Don't let her get away. I tell you, she's my wife. She's losing my wife. Now, take it easy. Take it easy. The warden will be here in a minute, and you can talk to him all you like. On your way to the lethal chamber. No. No, I'm innocent. I tell you, I've been framed. She's not dead. My wife's not dead. I'm innocent. 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 And so ends the tale. Murder must be paid for. As it is written in the sealed book, Tom Barrow paid the supreme penalty, though he protested his innocence to the last... Strange indeed are the ways of justice from which no mortal can escape. Keeper of the book, before you close the great volume, show us the tale we tell next time. This one. Ah, oh, yes. A tale of an old woman who for 40 years lived alone in a huge old New England mansion. A mansion in which death was the master. A tale titled, To Have and to Hold. Be sure to be with us again next time when the sound of the great gong heralds another strange and exciting tale from The Sealed Book. The Sealed Book, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is written by Bob Arthur and David Cogan.